Let's take a breath together. <sighs> Every week it becomes a little more challenging to stand in this swirl of whatever is going on um, and find inspiration sometimes requiring a lot of perspiration <laughs> um, yeah we are in some interesting times um, and one of the things that um, is important to me is to maintain a ministerial voice in the social media platforms That's an interesting dive these days. <laughs> I, I sometimes feel like I need a shower after reading my Facebook feed. Um, and what's interesting is um, what's happening here locally is no different than what's happening globally. And I was having a conversation with a ministerial colleague this week and one of the things that's being noticed is that we are in another one of those cycles where the violence the mental the verbal the emotional the physical violence that is showing up we've been here before it's just had a different wrapping paper okay um we were here in Rome, <laughs> right? We were here at the crucifixion of Jesus. We were here when we were burning witches at the stake. We were here when Darwin surfaced the science of evolution. Because what we're here doing is learning that we're not who we think we are. And we don't do well with that conversation. <laughs> At the human level, it is like the most egregious conversation that we can enter into is to literally question the foundation of our identity. It puts us in such a state of cognitive dissonance that we will literally kill the people that we say we love in order to not deal with changing the foundation of our identity. We will do it in the name of God. We will do it in the name of love. We will do it in the name of some other deity that we create for the sole purpose of doing what we need to do to protect that part of us. It is literally <clears throat> this place of fight or flight that removes the ability to flight. Okay. That's the piece I think we have to understand. That where we are socially, which impacts everything else. I mean, we can talk about politics. We can talk about the education system. Bottom line is, it all begins and ends in the individualized consciousness of each of us. And then the collective us. And right now, the collective us don't have any place to run to for relief. I was sitting in my house last night, and I, sometimes I just laugh at myself. And Deborah's like, what are you laughing at? And I'm like, oh, nothing. Because really, it's, it's so ridiculous. I don't even want to share it with the person that has like seen all of my stuff and still stays. <laughs> so I'm sitting there going... I'm a prisoner in my own house. And right behind that came, not true, you have the key. Can't be a prisoner in a place that you have the key to. <laughs> I was like, shut up. <laughs> I mean, 
Trust me, the conversations I have with you when I call you on your stuff, I have the same conversations with myself. And so it was really a, you know, a ridiculous, well, you can't possibly be a prisoner in your own home when you have the key. You can come and go as you please. What's true is that all of the places that you want to go to are saying, please don't come here. <laughs> Everything inside of you is saying, please stay home. You have a wife that is like, please don't do that. <laughs> right? And I get it. And there's a sad thing happening right now. That literally, it is like, I think of all the things that I have encountered, this may be the most emotionally painful that I've experienced in this human realm is watching interview after interview of people who are dying have an awakening that they didn't have to that there were other options that they could have chosen that might have prevented their death there's a family in Sacramento right now on the bottom of the hill <clears throat> that is organizing a memorial service for the father of five as a testing and vaccination clinic because that's what he asked them to do as they were getting ready to put him on a ventilator before he died. It can be different. There's a, there's a case, and, and why it hasn't been, you know, we put things in the news that are news, but sometimes we don't. There's, there's a selective process that happens in the news we get. Um, and there's, there's a lot of things happening right now. We're being fed a lot of information right now. And how do we know what's true and what's not? There's a man, and this is, I'm just going to warn you, this is a shocking story. Who, with a spear, killed his wife and his two young children. Because he was convinced from listening to one of the conspiracy theory groups. That his wife had, is carrying serpent DNA and that she had passed that DNA on to her children and the most loving thing that he could do would be to eliminate them before they mutated now understand what he's actually saying here he did this as an act of love and it's all too easy to couch all of this stuff in hatred, because we don't understand it, because we disagree with it. This morning's talk is our guidance positioning system. And it comes from GPS, which is global positioning system, which is a system of satellites that we can't see that feeds information back to a receptor point to tell us where we are and the directions and the time frame of where we're going. It is supposedly accurate within seven meters. <laughs> I can tell you <laughs> from managing a security company, we had the contract for the mall in Novato, California, down toward San Francisco. And if you know the area, there's a marshland off by the mall down there. <laughs> well, GPS doesn't communicate really well when there's bodies of water involved. And repeatedly, because my officers carried GPS systems, so I would know where they are. And repeatedly, my officer was patrolling the middle of the marsh. <laughs> Constantly. I'm like, what are you doing out there? <laughs> right. GPS in the satellites, not as reliable as we think it is. 
So if we consider all of this information that we're getting from all of these sources that's coded and funneled into each of us as receptors, perhaps all of the information that we're getting is not as accurate as we think it is. Perhaps. And perhaps the invitation is to flip the paradigm and stop looking outside of ourselves for the information. Stop even looking to our brain for the information because your brain is simply a repository of all the stuff you've gotten throughout your entire lifetime from where? The outside. <laughs> So if you're trusting your brain, all you're doing is trusting the closest inaccurate satellite. <laughs> Proximity does not create greater accuracy. <laughs> you get that? Proximity does not create greater accuracy. And do not... Do not fall into the lie that I am a more accurate satellite either because I may not be. <laughs> I'm processing stuff the same way you are. I have some different tools. So what? Doesn't make me any more right. Every one of us was born with the accuracy of creation. It's called consciousness. How do we find the message of consciousness? We strip away everything else. <laughs> See, finding consciousness isn't about going somewhere outside of us to find it. It's uncovering it because it's already here. You already have it. It's just Deeply buried in a landfill of BS. I'm just going to go out on a limb and think you, know, think you know what BS stands for. <laughs> Does it mean better stuff? <laughs> Our job is to excavate. Our job is to find the hidden beliefs and excavate them. Now, here's the problem. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, okay, at this moment, I need a God outside of myself because I need somebody to be pissed off at for creating it this way. And so the God of my understanding is oftentimes the Pentecostal God that beat me up for a long time, so I get to be mad at that one for a little while. <laughs> and I'm okay with it, and I've had conversations, and it's okay with it. <laughs> We're calling it balance. <laughs> and I have years banked on my side. Right? But the, the, the joke of it all is that we're one running around this world where we look like we're millions. It's like, really? What kind of cosmic sense of humor does this? And all I hear is this childlike little giggle every time I ask that question. <laughs> you know, this, this giggle that comes from a newborn infant the first time it has gas and we think they're laughing. Okay. It, that's just the way it got created. It's not some devious plot of creation to make us suffer. Truth be told, our suffering is optional. Here's another truth that you really probably don't want to hear. It's intentional. You intend to suffer because you choose it. Now there's the harsh reality. But it's also where the freedom is. Ernest Holmes says the very consciousness that sets us free imprisons us. How can that be? Because it's our thoughts that create our experience. And if you think you're being tortured, 
If you think you are a prisoner in your own house, it's real easy to switch that. Just tell yourself the truth. Nope, can't be a prisoner if you got the key. Doesn't mean we don't feel stuck. That's a different conversation. Right? It's a different conversation. And we need to own our feelings. We need to talk about our feelings. That's one reason why community is so vital. Because if we try to do this in a vacuum, we will lose what's left of our ever-loving minds. And even as I say that, I hear my friend, Reverend Jeffrey, say it. And you say that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> right. Maybe we need to lose our minds. Here's what I know. Life is giving us every opportunity to heal. It is giving us every opportunity to heal. I think the problem is we don't recognize what the healing is. And we go deeper into separation thinking that's where the healing is because we're only thinking about healing me. And that is the path to more sickness. The healing that is being offered us is oneness. Look at what's happening with climate change. It's not impacting one place. It's impacting every place. One. Oneness. Look what's happening with the virus. It's not impacting one place. It's impacting every place. Life is calling us to an experience and awareness of oneness. And if you need to go to your own body to grasp it first, go there. But, I, but really, the next time you feel anything in your body that's out of alignment, do you spend time being mad at the cells, trying to figure out how to demean them and make them feel less and calling them stupid. And just, you're not a part of me. You're not a part of our community. How about, how about liver cells? If you don't like it in this body, you just pack up and leave town. We don't do that, but we keep doing that with each other. Stop it. Stop it. Good people who know better are diving into this activity of nastiness. I'm here to tell you, you don't get to say you're living a spiritual life and act like an asshole. You don't get to do that. One of those is not true. I won't insult you by telling you which one. You get to be a part of the healing or you get to be a part of the illness. But you don't get to do both. You get to go back and forth while you figure it out. <laughs> you get to do that. But you cannot be both at the same time any more than the light can be on and the room be dark. It doesn't work that way. And so you're at choice. What are you listening to? Where are you speaking from? Are you living from the triangulation of three or four satellites that tell you what to do? Or are you going to choose to live from the center of your being that acts in a way that enhances the whole? Right? You've heard this before. You're probably going to hear it lots. Two things. The purpose of science of mind. The whole purpose of science of mind is to reconcile. To reconcile, to bring together. That's what reconcile means. The apparent separation of the spiritual world, which must be perfect, 
and the material world which appears imperfect. The whole reason we do this is to bring the two together, folks. Can't do that throwing rocks. Doesn't happen. The other thing that I think is one of the most brilliant things Ernest Holmes ever wrote because it's so clear. The criterion for any person as to what is right or wrong for them is not to be found in some other person's judgment. The criterion is, does the thing I wish to do express more life, more happiness, and more peace to myself? And, that three-letter word is huge here, and at the same time, harm no one. If it does, it is right. It is not selfish. But if it is done at the expense of anyone, anyone, not just the people I like, not the people in my family, anyone, then in such degree, we are making a wrong use of the law. We get to decide what we're going to do. Minute to minute, day to day. I'm going to leave you with the words of the man I spend the most time with other than myself, Howard Thurman. Too often the price exacted by society for security and, re and respectability is that the Christian movement in its formal expression must be on the side of the strong against the weak. You could fill in any religion there. Let's put science of mind. <laughs> this is a matter of tremendous significance for it reveals to what extent a religion that was born of a people acquainted with persecution and suffering has become the cornerstone of a civilization and of nations secured by a ruthless use of power applied to weak and defenseless people. Every one of us who has lashed out at somebody because they believe differently than we do has done that. We've just done it on a smaller scale. I invite you to get right with you, to get your internal satellites in alignment. When you encounter hate, meet it with love. When you encounter discord, meet it with peace. Too often, I'm going to wrap up with this, too often we look outside of ourselves for God to give us peace. It's not outside of you. God doesn't give peace. God is peace. We look outside of ourselves for God to give us love. God doesn't give you love. God is the love that you are. You're already that. You are made from it, by it. Now go be it. Let's take this into prayer. And so as I breathe, I go deeply inward into that internal guidance system. The consciousness that creates all. The one, the infinite, the ever-present allness of life. I recognize that it is pure love, pure light, peace, presence, beauty, intelligence, abundance. That everything that I can imagine perfection to be, it is. And I am that, made out of it by it, to be it.
And what is true of me is true of every expression of it. And so I lift my voice this morning, speaking my word, which is the word of the infinite speaking as me, calling itself into realization. Beyond appearance, beyond behavior, I consciously, intentionally choose to see God, to see spirit, to see divinity, whatever word works, but to see perfection of creation, to see pure consciousness in every one I meet. Beyond the words, beyond the behaviors, I stand as an open arms of love, refusing Refusing the inaccuracy of hate. Refusing the inaccuracy of judgment. I stand in the courage, the heart of love. And I be that. So grateful. So grateful for this path, this presence within me that constantly calls me back to the truth of my being. It refuses to let me go. <laughs> grateful, grateful, grateful. And so in this gratitude I release, knowing that the word spoken is the word fulfilled. It's already done. I let it go. And I step into an experience of what is. And so it is. Let's take a breath. <laughs>